and welcome back to Arsenal then, where we're here for part two of the STRV 103, the S tank. Starting off with the commander section, his independently rotating cupola. You can see on the outside, there are four per side grenade launcher tubes for the smoke grenades. The button of course for that is inside. One piece hatch behind uh, has a open protected as well as a full closed position. And I do note, I can see where IKEA is getting some of its inspiration from. I'm told this means washer fluid. So now, let us go on a voyage of discovery into the tank. That's easy enough. So my first time in an S-Tank, I am told that if you're over 1 meter 75, you did not get assigned to this tank. You got, I guess, sent over to the Centurions. Uh, we're trying something a bit different, uh, not least because it is confined space in here. Uh, they've kicked me out with a couple of GoPros. So let's see if we can see a little bit more tank and a little bit less me. I mean, I'm handsome and all, but you want to see the tank. Right, so I'm not going to go over the controls too much because they're pretty much identical with the drivers. What really does set them differently, however, is the use of the independent rotating cupola, which is controlled by use of a little joystick here. But it's handy enough. Now this is basically a hunter-killer system. Uh, so what you can do is you can independently scan with your stabilized cupola, and when you see a target worth engaging, you can then slew over the vehicle as a whole until the site appears in your counter-rotating stabilized cupola, at which point the gunner is now aiming at the target in question and it releases the commander to be free to go find new targets. Uh, again, we're going to come back to it uh, on the gunner side, but he does have the full range of gunnery optics available to him. This is one of those weird tanks that it is fully combat capable with one person. And I really can't think of any other tank where that is the case. Underneath the optics, he's got the controls for the smoke grenade launchers. There's two salvos, uh, four grenades per salvo, eight grenades in total. Uh, left side, he has a control for the KSP, the machine gun. And it is independently elevated by hand. And of course, I'm pulling the trigger by accident. It probably shouldn't be, but. There you go. There are warning signs all over this tank. I presume people think it is dangerous. Down below, uh, where the two pedals are for the controls, he's got two of them. He's got the brake pedal on the left, and on the right-hand side, he can fold up out of the way the accelerator. And you drop the accelerator down. Uh, there you go. Let's have another crack at this. There we go. So you drop the accelerator down and he can now drive the vehicle. Now here's the catch. With my feet on the pedals, there are my knees. Um, yeah, not really easy for me to drive. Now the other catch is that although the seat is adjustable in elevation and sliding forwards and backwards, there is a very large block behind me, which digs right into my back, so I can't go back as far as I want to. But that said, if I have my head to the side, it's well clear, it's out of the way, and it's comfortable enough to at least shoot. Uh, driving open hatch, well, fortunately, that's why I have the driver gunner. Not too much of a worry. Around him, he's got five periscopes. The front one is the unity side. It's got a couple of uh, circles on the right-hand side that show you your field of view. When you change the magnification from 6 to 10 to 18, 18 is quite impressive, it has to be said. Uh, bore side options on the right hand side here. Big red warning light. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it is supposed to warn, but I presume whatever sets that off is probably important. Down at the lower left, you can see the air vent. Uh, for cooling air, I am told that this tank has no heater uh, worthy of the name, and most of your heat just is residual heat coming off of the engine. Uh, so it'll keep you a little bit warm, but I'm told you really want to be wearing winter clothing when you operate this tank in winter. 
which I would argue is a bit of a flaw in a tank designed for use in Sweden. I mean, I've never been here in a Swedish winter. I suspect it is not warm. And uh, that's about the size of it. Down on the bottom left here, you can see the launchers for the illumination flares for night gunnery. And the gun tube is to his left, separating him from his two colleagues. So let's done. Let's hop on over to the driver's side. The unique feature of the STRV-103, of course, is the rear-facing driver slash radio operator. Now, initially, this tank was supposed to have a crew of two, uh, but there are a couple of objections muted to this. Now, one of which was that, frankly, combat has a lot of stuff going on for just two men to handle, and if at least somebody can handle the communications, good enough. Now, let's have a third one. Uh, a third man is very useful for maintenance tasks, for security tasks, things like that. And also, apparently, three people is going to result in nobody killing each other inside the tank. Apparently just two people inside the tank by the end of the war, if the enemy hasn't killed at least one of them, the other crewman will have. So allow me to demonstrate the position for driving to the rear. Now, again, I am tall. I'm taller than should be allowed in this tank, but you gotta be joking. My look back is that way, my legs are here. Anyway, if you wanted to go, you'd lift up the handle. The accelerator is this handle to the left. Your steering is conducted by this little wheel yoke to the right with a chain that then connects to various cables. And you look at one of your two periscopes. And that's it. I'm told that the tank will go almost as fast in reverse as it does forward. So this is gonna be quite a ride, I have to say, for the rear-facing driver in such a case. So you remember those five manually loaded rounds that were added to the left-hand side when we were at the back? Well, this is how he gets them into the feed tray. He pulls out this huge handle, which at least is well padded, so I guess when it's being thrown around, he's not gonna hurt himself too badly. And he simply uses this to crank. You can see the chain in the back there. Uh, in addition, you can also set the fuses for the HE rounds between delay and impact by use of this handle here. The last duty he has, in addition to driving rearwards and monitoring all the systems, is he's in charge of the radio. The radio is located incredibly inconveniently behind the warning panel. It's way back down under here, so in order to access anything, he's got to scoot down and then look up and see what he's manipulating. Now, fortunately, once the channels are preset, he does have the option of changing the channels by use of the channel controller on the left. 